if I'm honest, like some of the people that are hard for me to love are in my very own family. <laughs> and uh, like, I hate saying that out loud, but it's true. And so, you know, Jesus d- dealt with that. He gets it. He gets us. And so he his example calls me to a radically different way of relating to people than probably what the world tells me to do. Um, one of the things we we've been able to do with He Gets Us is we have merch. Um, there's hats, there's shirts, there's water bottles. But here's the here's the interesting part, or here's kind of the plot twist. And you go through the shopping cart, and you go to check out. You cannot pay for that with money. The 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 instead of that, the cost of the item is you choose some act of love, some act of confounding love, like Jesus demonstrated. So for your hat, do you want to forgive someone? Do you want to love an enemy? Do you want to welcome a stranger? And you literally choose that at the checkout. And then when you receive that hat in the mail, it says, don't forget, you said you were going to forgive someone. Wow. That's right. Well, today I want to talk about this campaign called He Gets Us. I saw it during the World Cup. One of my favorite sports in the entire world, football, the real football. And I love it. So as I was watching, you know, Mexico lose to Argentina and then Argentina eventually winning the World Cup, which was pretty amazing and intense. I kept seeing these ads popping up on the TV and it was very emotional. It was super, a super short ad, but it was kind of like about Jesus, about family. And then at the end, it says, he gets us. Get to know Jesus more pretty much at hegetsus.com. And I said, I'm super curious. I want to know what this is about. You know, I have Christian podcasts. I talk about Christianity and culture. And I want to get to know people who are impacting culture, who are impacting our world, right? So today we have Brad Hill on the show. Brad, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Beto, good to be here. Awesome. Well, Brad, I mean... This is going to be great. Like I said, I saw you guys on the World Cup ads, but I know you guys have been doing these campaigns like further than that and even other sporting events, uh, billboards across America. So I said, I want to get to know you guys a little bit. And today we want to kick off the show with an emoji. <laughs> okay, so are you ready for that, Brad? I mean, that's. I love that you're doing it. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> okay, yes. here we go. Let's see. We're going to go to the Belifo meter for today. And it is the skeptical emoji. All right. Skepticism. Brad, this is your idea to, t- to kick us off with the episode. Why are you resonating with the skepticism? What's the idea behind skeptical emoji today? Okay, so so you you set it up really well. I mean, he gets us is is this media uh, campaign that's been everywhere. You, you you saw it on World Cup. It's been out there, outdoor ads, digital TV, you name it. Um, and the the purpose of this project really is to help people kind of reintroduce themselves to this person called Jesus, and. Um, we want, we want to do that in a way that invites them to take a fresh look, um, explore, read, watch, all those things. And what we know is that even where you have people who might say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not a church person, or you know what, I, I don't call myself a Christian, maybe I don't use the, those labels all the time, I, I might still be open to Jesus. And in fact, we did a lot of research for about a year before we started all this and what we found was there's a there's a huge openness to Jesus but that's not the same thing as saying that I'm all in on religion or I want to go to church so we we look at these people as spiritually open in some way but they might still be a little skeptical they might have some questions and so you gave me five emojis I'm like I think that's the one that's that's <laughs> who we're talking to awesome well thank you so much Brad well, I love that. I love the, the the idea behind it. So before we move a little bit further on on the research and what you call the continuum and the attitude that people have towards Jesus, could you tell us a little bit about like 
who's behind who gets us? Is it a church? Is it are you guys Christian? Are you guys Mormon? Does it matter? Just a little bit about the a little bit of the background of who gets us the campaign. Right. So he gets us is um, is its own organization, its own entity. Um, there's a group of organizations and a growing group of individuals and even donors that are that are really part of this. It's it's really starting to shape up more like a movement. Um, he gets us is not affiliated with any particular church. It's not with any particular denomination. We would say that it's it's about the Jesus of the Bible. Um, and and so that that kind of gives you a little bit of a sense of where we focus and every story we tell, every message we have is carefully examined, you know, through the lens of scripture. But the purpose of the campaign is not to advertise a church or to get people to go to any particular type of church. It we we partner with lots of churches and we love lots of different, you know. Christian churches and different denominations and non-denominations, we got lots of partnerships, but the campaign thinks that its job really is just simply to reintroduce Jesus. Um, and so that's where we stay focused. I love that. So I'm looking at your Instagram page and I love how it has all, all kinds of, um, I mean, it says Jesus basically on every picture, but for example, one of them says Jesus was a refugee Another one, Jesus says, Jesus confronted racism with love. Uh, Jesus was from the sticks. Jesus uh, Jesus was wrongly judged. So there's several uh, statements about Jesus. And I love that. So uh, I guess the question I have right now before we we dive like deeper is what's going on right now? What what do you guys see in America that you have almost like a need to reintroduce Jesus? I mean, for a country that for a long time has has been known, maybe even, you know, the Eastern world sees America as, well, that's a Christian nation in a sense. And what you're saying is, hey, not necessarily. We need to reintroduce Jesus even to our own people here in America. This campaign has been broadcasted here in America. So, um What, what do you see happening in our own culture here in the U.S. that this is needed to say we need to reintroduce Jesus and even use terms that are so relatable to what's happening right now? Like Jesus was a refugee, right? And there's there's this thing called the, the refugee crisis at the southern border, um, confronting racism, like things that are actually happening in our culture. So why was that needed to reshape our vision of Jesus? Right. I love that question. I, I mean, as I think about what you're saying, I, I, I would say there's a big answer and a small answer. The big answer is um, actually at the very beginnings of this project, um, one of the one of the folks who, who helped get it kicked off sat back and just kind of asked this big question. Um, and it was in response to some things we see across our culture. How did this is the question? How did the, the world's greatest love story become known as a hate group? And wow. because as we think about out in culture, you know, there are a lot of places you can point to them where, you know, folks look at the church or Christians, or maybe they've had a bad experience and, you know, they're not, they're not so sure if that's, that's really where they want to associate or they're not, they're not sure if there's love or acceptance or peace there. Um, so that was, that was one of the first questions that really got this kicked off, which is a big one. Right. And then the small answer to your question, if I could put it that way is down just at the individual level, like you and me and our families and our friends, um, we all have experiences in our lives. And maybe I'm going through uh, a relationship story right now. And maybe you're, you know, thinking about finances, or maybe someone is dealing with mental health. We all have these experiences. And what we learned is a lot of folks don't realize that Jesus cares about all of it that whatever your story is, there's a shared experience there um, that because Jesus was fully human and walked the earth and had a lot of the similar challenges and struggles that we all face, that he's relatable and that he's relevant. And so that, I mean, you, you hear it in the whole name of the project, right? Whatever it is you're going through, he gets you, he gets us. And so it could be a big cultural statement Uh, to answer your question, why now? But it also, we think, is just an opportunity to to really connect Jesus to whatever it is that you as an individual are going through. And that opens a door to want to learn more. 
Awesome. I love that. I love the the like small and a big answer to this. And I want to play a video right now, which is what is actually the one I saw during the World Cup. So let's watch it real quick. I mean, it's super short, super well done. And then we'll we'll kind of like recap on on the meaning of he gets us again. There was a family that played together and laughed together. But as they grew older, opinions widened. Conversations became heated and reunions became uncomfortable. They thought they were made for each other. Eventually, gathering stopped because each had to be right. We don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. Oh, no. Jesus disagreed with his own loved ones, but he didn't disown them. I mean, that was so powerful, Brad. As, as I was like watching this, it's just so well done. It's so short, but it speaks to that level of human relationships that I, I think not only he, he gets us, it's, it's making a strong point, but I think there's also um, like we get the message when we, when we watch this, It impacts the people that are watching because it's so relatable. We think, yeah, I've, I've, you know, I fight with my family sometimes, or I fought with my family, or I have mm -hmm. disbanded my family because of our own fights, right? And and when you see something like this, it's just like, wow, I think we've all been there. But then to have that phrase, like, well, guess what? Jesus gets us. Like he 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 faced almost the same things. Tell me a little bit about like the research that you guys did before even putting an ad like this? Like, what was the process to say, we think this is what's going to hit people like right in the heart and say, you know, I, I want to get to know more about this campaign or this movement, like you said. I love you had that reaction. I mean, that's uh, that's what we hear a lot. It, it's you, you can see yourself in the, in, the, in the ad, right? And every one of them, like you said, even though it's 10 seconds or 30 seconds, it tells a story. Um, there's so many stories uh, throughout the life of Jesus, and we're all used to probably hearing some of the classic Bible stories, but there's there's real stuff in there that relates. You know, the Bible is not this outdated ancient book. It it's alive, and it it relates to our experiences today. So, you know, we the the research that I mentioned earlier, we we just spent a lot of time talking to folks who would say that they fall really on a wide spectrum of their relationship to Jesus, their relationship to the church, how open are they? And we really focused in on this large group of Americans who they said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not a church person or I don't, I don't consider myself religious, but I'm open to Jesus. And we even heard them say things like, you know, I think his teachings were good. And I think if the world just lived like he taught, we'd all be better off. Even if they didn't really have a lot of in-depth knowledge of his teachings, you know, they're not a Jesus expert. They just intuitively have this idea that, yeah, he's probably, he's probably onto something. And, um, and so we took that and, and, and really explored it more deeply. There's, there's four quick things that just surfaced again and again, even again, people who wouldn't say they're a Christian, they said, you know, we see some stuff in Jesus that we like. We think that number one, he, he sought peace. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, He was um, he was there to bring peace and kind of a, a form of unity that we just need in this world today. Um, another thing is that he was approachable. I mean, think of all the people that mm. just walked up to Jesus or touched his garment or hung out with him that were kind of oppressed or on the fringes of society. I mean, that's a that's a pretty radical thing in our day to think about someone like Jesus being approachable. Um, so we heard a lot of that. Um, Jesus was compassionate, was another trait that people told us that they really admired, um, that he he looked looked for ways to give people a hand up. He he cared deeply about the folks that maybe other others weren't paying attention to. He healed, you know, but um, even just on a human level, he paid attention to folks with compassion. And then the last thing is that Jesus loved all. Um, he loved everybody. And um, including those that were maybe hard to love. So when you think about like the the video you just played, it's like I'm I'm like you. I mean, if I'm honest, like some of the people that are hard for me to love are in my very own family. Mm. <laughs> and uh, like 
I hate saying that out loud, but it's true. And so, you know, Jesus d- dealt with that. He gets it. He gets us. And so he, his example calls me to a radically different way of relating to people than probably what the world tells me to do. Um, so we just, we latched on to those things that people said they see in Jesus, you know, the idea that he sought peace, he was approachable, compassionate, loved everyone. And so that's, that's not the only words you're going to see. And he gets us, but that really informs a lot of the way we think about telling these stories. Wow. I love that. And I love like specifically when you, when you said approachable, it makes so much sense that, that people resonate with that. Because, for example, here in America, right, there's there's this celebrity culture. And basically, when you're a celebrity, you're like on the on the opposite end of being approachable. Right. Because, I mean, who I mean, like I saw um, a little clip of Justin Bieber, maybe like a year ago or so, but he's trying to get to his home. And then all these people are like, Justin, can you give me a hug? And then he's like. Honestly, this is my house. Can I have a little moment of like alone time, like being peace and whatnot? And and you think, I mean, you, you kind of brought that upon yourself, not not in a bad way, right? I know everybody needs their own moments of, of solitude and their own peace, but that's really the culture in which we live in, where we, we have celebrities so high up that people follow that and you no know, crowds like I just saw you no know, Argentina just won the World Cup and like four million people That's came right. out in the streets that when the players came to say, hey, we won, they couldn't even get downtown because it was so packed that they had to fly them in helicopters, right? So I mean it's it's at least they had helicopters to do that, right? But it's almost that idea that when when there's such a celebrity culture it's hard to get around those people that you admire, or those people that you think might help you. And just to think that, that Jesus was approachable, that even in the midst of a crowd, he would be able to say, somebody touch me, somebody touch my garment. And then like the disciples, right? I'm just going to the Bible right now. Um, yep. The disciples go, what do you mean? I mean, there's crowds of people here around you. And he's like, no, I felt power coming out of me and, and I know somebody touched me. And then this woman kind of confesses. And I know this because I was just reading it today in Mark. And, you know, the woman comes and she's, what I love is that when she comes to him, it says that she was, um, her heartbeat was accelerating. And she felt a little bit of the shame, maybe, of like, what did I just do? I just touched this. Like, if we picture in, in our own culture, I just touched this celebrity is that going to cost me trouble? Am I going am I going to be in trouble now, right? And he knows that she touched him, but he has enough time to pause and say there's something here going on. And then I mean, we know the miracle, right? She she gets healed from this miracle. So, wow, these four words that you say people are are bringing up and there's even more than that in how people resonate with with Jesus's teachings even um I'm making it kind of long right here, but I also remember like this interview with Elon Musk. I don't know if you've seen it. It's on the um, Babylon B. So these guys have him, oh, right? Yeah. And, and they say, you know, oh, we're a Christian company and whatnot. And anyways, I mean, they're, they're super sarcastic. So it's hard to know which part is they're laughing at it and which part they're serious about it. But it's so interesting because when they interview Elon, he, he like he knows about Jesus's teachings, and he says, well, I think, I think forgiveness is important. And I think like, you know, Jesus taught these things that I think they're important and relevant to our culture. So even to think that somebody that we could maybe consider even a celebrity has some sort of like back knowledge of, well, I, I think Jesus is important, right? Like maybe you don't know him deeply, but at least I think people know what Jesus is about in the general sense. I, I think that's what you're saying with these four words and even beyond. So how are you guys helping move uh, people from maybe that skepticism to to the other? Like in my case, it would be the emojis, right? So I'd say, how do we move people to from skepticism or even blasphemous to holy or divine or inspired? Like what's the next step after this campaign shows up, people go to the website and then what happens? Well, first of all, you're so right. I mean, on the Justin Bieber and Elon Musk, you know, what 
what you're doing. Like we should bring, we should hire you on the campaign because you're, <laughs> you're, you're taking, you know, what are some of these like simple, powerful stories about Jesus and then really kind of retelling it just through a modern lens. Cause we have that word today that they didn't have in Bible times of influencer, mm. but I mean, Jesus was an influencer and he actually dealt with crowds and you, you just brought up a wonderful example of one way he did that, but his disciples and others times maybe acted like handlers and mm. they're like, no, no, don't let these little kids come up. And, but Jesus said, no, let the, let the kids come to me. Let the children come to me. That's him being approachable. But then, you know, just a chapter or two later in the story, Jesus actively leaves the crowd because he needs rest and he needs to go recharge and pray. Right. And so uh, over time, actually, that he gets us ads, will continue exploring different different aspects of Jesus. Like what are, what are all the things he needed to create this radical movement of love? And one of those is rest. Um, he needed friends, he needed enemies, he needed women, he needed a diverse set of, you know, followers, but, um, we're going to just look at those through these modern lenses. Cause it's so relatable when, when you bring up some of those celebrities in our day that yes, they, there's some very similar parallels there that, that we can see. Um, when we when we have a person who watches one of these ads, like you saw one on World Cup, or maybe they've seen it on another sporting event, or just a rerun of The Office, or a Times Square billboard, they're all doing the same thing, which is they go to the website. You mentioned it earlier. It's hegetsus.com. That's a public website. And it's designed to really invite people to just on their own pace, um, it stay anonymous, but they can explore so maybe that the ad you showed about Jesus disagreed, but never disowned, you know, they're like, what do you mean by that? And so they can go read a little bit more about that idea, that theme, and maybe explore some other things. Um, the number one thing, by the way, that people have been doing once they get to the website and they, they want to do something more is they want to read about Jesus in the Bible. Um, and so we, we provide, uh, several different reading plans. They're super short, super easy. You know, you can go on your, on the mobile app, you version, and you can read for a few days, you know, kind of get introduced at your own pace. Nobody around you just, just explore. Um, another thing people do is they may want prayer. Uh, they're like, Hey, I, I don't want to go to church or anything like that, but I'd be, I'd be up to text somebody and just have them pray for me. There's something going on in my life or, or maybe seeing this ad has stirred in me something. Uh, so there's opportunities for folks to keep exploring, to, to get prayer. And then we do, we do give them an option to get, maybe get connected with some people near you to ask questions, but it's all with this heart of like, bring your hardest questions. There's no expectation that you have to be perfect or you have to be a certain way or you have to be Christian. We just want, we want to help you kind of learn more about this person, Jesus. Um, and, and over time, we're all on some journey toward him over time. We think you're going to like what you see. Um, so that's, that's the progress of getting hopefully through these emojis, right. Getting them from just being skeptical to maybe it's inspired. Maybe it's, I'm interested. I want to learn more. And we, we say that's a win. Um, but we've had crazy stories of people, um, who the man they've they've had some life they've been they've been through stuff and then just seeing a 30 second ad on a baseball game turns them around like it's it it just gets them at a moment um and we're we're seeing that routinely right now um with with people encountering these messages wow i love that so tell me a little bit about like the 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 audience that's tuning in like how how many people are tuning in uh what's the What's the response to an ad per se? Like, an, and I'm this is kind of like curiosity, but isn't it expensive also to put an ad on TV? Still, I know that now everything is like streaming and things like that, but I I still think like television is pretty expensive to put ads on. So, I mean, that speaks of 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 the the care, even the love for the message. Like you said at the beginning, this is if this is like the greatest story ever told. It's, it's probably going to cost money, right? I've talked to 
uh, Daryl Eves, the producer of the Chosen, the first no ever uh, TV series of of the life of Jesus and his disciples, and he was kind of like sharing a little bit of that, right? That that to put it on, to put on the show, it costs a lot of money. So tell me a little bit about that that heart to say. This is how many people we want to reach, perhaps, and this is how much it's going to cost because that's the amount of people we want to reach. That's right. Well, <clears throat> we're in a media saturated generation, right? I mean, we're all just glued to our screens all the time, and so being able to get the the message and this 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 view of Jesus in front of people is a big ask. It's a big goal. It's audacious, um, mm -hmm. and you're right. It's it also is a is a great stewardship because it's this mm -hmm. incredible story and it's a story that sometimes gets muddled for people because they they maybe associate the story with to get to Jesus I have to I feel like I have to measure up to a standard or I have to live a certain way um and you know what we know is Jesus is approachable right so we want to we want to create as accessible as available and as attractive a picture of Jesus as we think we can. And it's, by the way, not in competition with anything else that maybe a church or a ministry is doing. We want to complement what they're doing. In fact, that's that's how we we're working with so many great churches and ministries is it's like it's like the ground is softened. If I can use like a farming analogy, it's like the ad kind of gets people interested and a little bit intrigued. And then maybe a local ministry or just group of Jesus followers can take that person and walk with them in a way that they wouldn't have been able to reach that person any any other way. So on a broad scale, to our knowledge, this is the biggest faith-related campaign in history. Wow. Um, so it is at a at a at a large scale. It it is right now just in the US. Um, and we we believe it will it'll be here for a sustained period, you know, hopefully multiple years. Um, we've, we've been at this now about nine months, something like that. Um, and you're right there, the, the ads to get them out there, there's, there's a, there's a cost to that. Um, and so we're so, we're so grateful that we have donors and we have a growing list of folks who have said, you know, we want to support this. And so we, we have the resources right now to get these, these views, these, these stories out to big audiences, um, And, and use every medium available to us. And as a result, <clears throat> every day, right now we're seeing about three million people viewing on YouTube. Um, we it's it's hard to count billboards, right? But it's we know the impressions are now in the billions of people, um, or billions of of impressions rather. And then you have all range of online TV, radio, et cetera, that are filling in, um, and then you know, the, the Bible reading plans I mentioned, like that's one of the most common actions somebody takes. Mm. What's been so breathtaking to us is lots of folks are starting Bible plans, but there's a high percentage that finish the Bible reading plans. That's a really important point because um, actually a lot of times in, in this world of Bible reading, you know, I mean, I'm guilty of this. We start and we kind of like <laughs> get out of the habit or yeah. we don't finish. Like, these people are actually finishing it out and they're, they're like, I want more. Um, so that, that signals, that should be an encouraging sign to all of us who, who love Jesus and are Christ followers. Like there's a hunger mm. out there and, and the way that these messages are connecting with people, it's just a new tactic. And, mm. um, you know, we're, we're seeing it start to work and, and over time we're going to continue to pour gas where we think it's working best. We've got incredible talent, like, The people that are designing these ads and shooting videos and writing messages, these are the same people that serve some of the biggest brands in America. They like they know how to reach our culture. And they're now stewarding, like you said, the greatest love story, the greatest story ever told. So you're seeing that we hope come out in the quality and just the the emotional nature of these stories. And that's I think that's why it's reaching people. Wow, that's so beautiful. So, yeah, I think overall. Uh, for the conversations I've been having with pastors, um, people in the arts, musicians. The other day I had a woman who's at the Museum of the Bible and she's going to do this play of, uh, what's the name? 
C.S. Lewis write one of his books from, from the Narnia series. And she was mm. so excited because there's, there's almost like a, a renaissance of the arts here in America. So I love that you're saying that there's people who know how to impact the culture who are saying, well, I can, I can make an ad and I can make it impactful and I can use my artistry in a sense to do so, right? So I think, I think something new is brewing here in America, especially. And I think that's, I'm, I'm super excited. I think I'm on the inspired emoji with all of that. So I would love go. to hear two uh, final questions before going to our, you know, our, our emoji uh, recap. And one would be, tell me like one story of, of have you seen people maybe progress right from the, from the skeptical to, to the, I don't know, holy or divine emoji to the, wow, that their life was transformed. I don't know. I'm sure you have <laughs> out of like 3 million people tuning in, uh, there's gotta be at least one story like that. Right. And then the second one will be, well, I'll save it for, for when you finish that, I'll tell you the next one. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that my brain only has to think about one thing at a time. <laughs> yes. That's great. Um, so yeah, stories all over the place. I'll tell you a quick one. And, and it's actually related to something I'm really excited about. Um, one of the things we, we've we been able to do with He Gets Us is we have merch. Mm -hmm. um, there's hats, there's shirts, there's water bottles. Um, and and people can find those on the, the website. But here's the, here's the interesting part, or here's kind of the plot twist. When you go on and you choose a, a, a hat, maybe that says something like Jesus was wrongly judged or Jesus was a refugee. When you choose your item and you go through the shopping cart, you go to check out, you cannot pay for that with money. Um, the, 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 instead of that, the cost of the item is you choose some act of love, some act of confounding love like Jesus demonstrated. So for your hat, do you want to forgive someone? Do you want to love an enemy? Do you want to welcome a stranger? And you literally choose that at the checkout. And then when you receive that hat in the mail, it says, don't forget, you said mm. you were going to forgive someone. Wow. And so, so the story is <clears throat> we had a gentleman, his name is Dan, and I can use his name because he publicly posted this on Twitter. He, he held up a picture of his water bottle that he got from He Gets Us. And he said, I paid for this water bottle with forgiveness. And so I hereby want to publicly forgive the man who shot and killed my mother Ooh. back in 1997. So think about that. He's been holding on to this for, you know, decades. Right. And, and so I, I was just blown away by this. I think we all were. Um, I was also, if I'm honest, a little bit skeptical emoji. Cause I'm like, I want to make sure this is real. Like this mm. guy's legit. So I actually, you know, we were able to track him down and had a, phone call with Dan and his story had been, you know, years and years, um, his, his family went through some trials. And then, like he said, his mother was killed and it was a traumatic time to say the least in his life, sent him on a spiral. That a lot of folks can relate to, right. He, he got into things he's not proud of. He got into alcohol, was in drugs. He was in some bad relationships and he had heard about Jesus years ago, but really had drifted far away. And then he thought something I think a lot of folks think, which is if Jesus knew what I've done, he wouldn't, he wouldn't accept me. Right. Like I'm not good enough for, for church or for Jesus or any of that. So he had just sort of written it off, I guess. And then he's watching a baseball game and sees an ad come on that says he gets us. And, and that particular message just hit him at a moment that he told me, he said, I felt something inside. And so I went to the website that led him to get his item. He did, he did his act of forgiveness, like I told you. And then he, he's like, I, I was in a recovery program and I know this pastor that was there and he had talked to me years ago. And so I called him up and I've been meeting with him every week now for a couple months. Um, he's like, I've seen a, a side of Jesus. I never even knew existed. And he said, I want to help get this message out as many people as possible, what you guys are doing, people need to know. Um, and so what an incredible, like, continuum, right? I mean, he had, he's been through some life and then just seeing a, a media message and giving him something to do, 
kindled something in him. And so we're, we're just grateful that stories like that are coming all over the place. Wow. Ah, that's a wonderful story. And it, it started with free water, right? <laughs> but it's, <laughs> right. it's probably the most costly water ever. I mean, what an amazing way to invite people to consider things to have a, a price other than money. Because I, I think we pay all the time, right? And, and that's basically the idea with Jesus dying on the cross is that he paid a price. Right. And and we always think maybe even here in America, we tend to think in terms of money or economics all the time. But there's really a, an economics of the heart that sometimes in, in that ec economy, our hearts need to forgive in order to to be wealthy. Right. To be like wealthy spiritual beings. Right. And even human beings just in general. So that's lovely. And. So the last question would be similar to that, but I want to get to know a story from you, Brad. Like, what's your own walk with Jesus? Like, um, I mean, you're a part of this and you seem like super authentic and, and honest about uh, what this whole campaign and movement is. So I'm wondering what's what brought you to Jesus, right? What's your own walk with Jesus? Where have you seen him work in your life or transform you or what's been your own story of of healing in a sense or what's what's um yeah i guess that's the question like what's what has jesus done in your life well i i've been walking with jesus uh since age 11 and um <clears throat> it's ironic in some ways that what what caused I, i remember the day it was a wednesday night when i was 11 and i saw this guy speaking <clears throat> um and he was a painter He's an artist and I, I love art. I love visual imagery. And that's just a lot of times I feel like how God speaks to me, probably a little bit why I'm excited about now a media campaign. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but this, this gentleman was painting a picture um, and, you know, as he was doing it, he was talking and he was able to just weave the beauty of this scene he painted. And, and it was like some special effect at the end, he turned on a black light and there's the face of Jesus in the painting. And, I was a sucker for that. So that was, that was in some ways the start of my journey <clears throat> with Jesus. And over the years of being involved in businesses and getting married, and I have two teenage daughters now, and, you know, those experiences have taught me how to be humbled, uh, how selfish I am, like all the areas that kind of the dark places in my heart. And so for me, I'm on a journey with Jesus and, you know, You, you hear it maybe in some of even the way we're approaching this project is it's not like you're in or you're out. It's not like, you know, the moment like you become a Christian, like you're perfect. It's like, we're all, we're all sinful beings, right? We're all, we've all got stuff. And uh, so I, I just try to approach everything with a little bit of a position of as much humility as I can muster. And if I encounter somebody else, like I've, I've been wearing my He Gets Us hats and I've been in, in the back of an Uber now four or five times and they've asked me questions about it. Mm. And uh, I get into it with one guy. He said, I was raised a Christian, but I kind of fell away from all that stuff and I don't think I'm good enough. And, you know, what I share with somebody like that is like, man, I'm not good enough either. Like, I don't think any of us is good enough. And uh, and yet what I've learned is that Jesus wants me as I am. And he came, he came and just sacrificed everything for me. And I'm never, I'll never deserve that, but man, I'm thankful for it. So part of my job is to tell you what I've learned and maybe that plants a seed with you. And I think God has big plans for you. Um, you know, so, so I'm, I am in many ways just like so blessed and grateful that I get to work on something like this because I think it's exactly what we need, like at this time right now. And it's a tool for me to use as one Jesus follower, helping another out. Wow, I love that. Thank you for sharing your story. So this is what we're going to do now. Brad Hill. You're going to go from blasphemous to divine. So out of the five emojis, we'll kick off with the first one, the red one, the ugly one, the shocking one. So when we talk about he gets us and maybe the culture in America, 
What is the worst idea you can think of? The most blasphemous out there? Man, I think I think as it relates to Jesus, uh, he's the focus of this. Um, no one owns Jesus, and and we can all get to him, right? So he is he's approachable, like we said. Don't think that because you've done something or you are a certain way that you can't. And if anybody tells you that, that's that's blasphemous. Love it. Skeptical emoji. What is the most skeptical idea you can think of? So if you have hard questions about Jesus, he says, bring it. Like there is no question too hard. Um, you might not be sure about something. You might have questions. There's some big questions people ask and those are welcome. So I would say if you're skeptical, you're in a great spot. He <laughs> just wants to talk. Love it. Okay. Questions are welcome. Inspire. Where do you see inspiration? What inspires you? I'm inspired by people doing radical acts of love because they see Jesus doing it as an example. So, you know, forgiving, helping, serving, sacrificing, that's inspiring to me. And we should be, we should be known for that. The Bible says, always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have. I hope that all of us as Jesus followers can do something that inspires somebody else. Love it. The most holy idea you can think of. It's pretty simple. I think uh, when when we encounter Jesus, he makes us holy. Um, we can't make ourselves holy necessarily, but he um, he has the ability to do that. He wants to do that for all of us. And lastly, divine, the most divine idea out there. Well, I think uh, you mentioned C.S. Lewis earlier. He has a quote, something to the effect of the best things in this world are yet to come. Mm. And so I think that if we live with an attitude of you can know for sure where you're going when this life ends. And if you have that eternal perspective, um, then it colors every decision, every encounter you have here today, right now. So if you know where you're going and you can know that, um, I think that's that casts this divine, almost ideal picture of you sweat things differently, right? You You worry about stuff. You don't get offended as much because you know where you're going. Man, I almost feel like I want to pray. That's so good. But we're going to party it out. <laughs> All right, Brad Hill with the He Gets Us campaign that I saw on the World Cup 2022 where Argentina won. But you might have seen it at other places, other sporting events, a billboard and upcoming... What's that called? The football thing? See, I, I love soccer so much. I don't know about the other one. <laughs> Super Bowl. Americano. Football Super Americano. Football Americano. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Yeah, and Beto, I can get just a little sneak peek for your for your audience here. Uh, yeah, you're right. We can we can talk about this now that we, we're going to be in the Super Bowl. Uh, not one ad, but we're going to have two ads in the game. Wow. And any of your audience that um, are excited by that, I'm excited by it. You can you can get some updates and there's some like insider info that we want everybody to have. Um, so if you send a text, it's, it's super easy. There's a number 70193. If you send a text to 70193, just put the word Super Bowl in there and you'll be on the inside track. We're going to share some stuff leading up to the, the Super Bowls on February 12th this year. Um, we want everybody to be ready. We want you to be excited and Uh, we want you to be able to have some conversations just in a natural way, right? So uh, join that text. You know, we're not going to hassle you at all, but um, we, we think there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people that are like, put me in coach. I want to, I want to, I want to know what's going on at this game. And so that's the way to do it. There you go. For lovers of football Americano, it's 70193. Tech Super Bowl, and you're going to be an insider. Brad, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Brad.
Thank you, my friends. You know, like, subscribe, share this episode with a friend if you find it helpful. Rate us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and all those good places. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.